Snow White and Rose Red. There was once a poor widow who lived in a little cottage with her two children, Snow White and Rose Red. They were so named because they were like the flowers on the two rose bushes which grew outside of the cottage. These two children were as good as any children in the world. They loved each other dearly and agreed that they would never separate. Often the children would run deep into the forest to gather berries. The hare would eat out of their hands and the fawn would graze at their side. In the evening, their mother would go, say, Go Snow White and bolt the door. And the three of them would sit down before the hearth and the mother would read out of a book while her children sat spinning. By their side lay a little lamb and on a perch behind him a little white dove rested with her head under a wing. One evening when snowflakes were falling there was a knock at the door. Rose Red drew the bolt and a great big bear poked his head in. Rose Red ran back, the little lamb bleated, the dove fluttered on her perch and Snow White hid behind her mother. The bear began to speak. Do not be afraid. I will do no harm. May I come in and warm myself? Poor bear, cried the mother. Come in and lie down before, before the fire. Then she said to Snow White and Rose Red, Come here, my daughters. The bear will not harm you. Soon the lamb and the dove, too, overcame their fears and welcomed the visitor. Children, said the bear, please clean the snow off my coat. Snow White and Rose Red swept the snow off with their brooms. Then the bear stretched himself before the fire. The children played with the clumsy animal. They pulled his long shaggy hair, they set their feet upon his back and rolled him to and fro. The bear bore all their tricks good naturedly, and if they hit too hard, he called out, Leave me my life, you children, Snow White and Rose Red, or you will never wed. When bedtime came and the bear had gone to sleep, the mother said to the bear, You may sleep here on the hearth if you like. In the morning the bear trotted away over the snow, but in the evenings he returned at a certain hour. He would lie down on the hearth and allow the children to play with him. But one morning when the spring had returned and all the green, everything was green again, the bear told Snow White that he must leave them and could not return the whole summer. Snow White was sad to see the bear leave. As he passed through the door, his hairy coat caught on the bolt. Snow White thought she saw the glittering of gold under the coat. The bear ran off and was soon hidden behind the trees. Sometime later, the mother sent the children into the woods to gather sticks. They came to a tree lying across the path, and there was a dwarf with a wrinkled face and a snow white beard. Mm. The end of his beard was caught in the split of the tree, and the little man was trying to free himself. He glared at the children. Are you going to pass by without even offering my help? What have you done, little man? asked Rose Red. I wanted to split the tree to get some wood from my fireplace, and my beard got caught. The children tried and tried to free the dwarf, but without success. Finally, Snow White pulled her scissors from a pocket and cut off the end of his beard. As soon as the dwarf was freed, he snatched up his sack. The children's salt was filled with gold. He threw it over his shoulder and marched off grumbling. Stupid people to cut off a piece of my own beautiful beard. Sometime afterwards, Snow White and Rose Red went fishing. As they came near the pond, they saw the same dwarf hopping about on the bank. What are you doing? asked Rose Red. You will fall into the water. I'm not quite such a simpleton as that, replied the dwarf. Don't you see that my beard is caught in my fishing line and this fish is pulling me in? Snow White and Rose Red tried to untangle the dwarf's beard, but they could not. So Snow White pulled out her scissors again and cut off another piece of the little man's beard. The dwarf cried in a fit of rage. It was not enough to shorten my fine beard once, but you, now you must take the best part of it. With these unkind words, the dwarf took a bag of precious stones and slipped away to his cave. Not many days after his adventure, the children happened to pass the place where the dwarf had shaken out of his bag of precious stones. Thinking no one was near, the bright stones glittered so that Snow White and Rose Red stopped to admire them. The dwarf suddenly appeared. Why do you stand there gaping? He raged. Suddenly, there was a loud roaring noise, and a great bear came running out of the forest. The dwarf jumped up, but he could not reach his cave before the bear overtook him. Spare me, my dear Prince Bear, the dwarf cried out in fear. I will give you all my treasures. What have you to fear from this little man like me? There are two wicked girls. Take them instead. But the bear gave the dwarf a single blow with his paw. The bad-hearted dwarf did not move again, and the children were running away, and the bear called after them. Snow White, Snow White Rose Red, do not be afraid. Wait, I will go with you. The children recognized the bear's voice and stopped. To their great surprise, his rough coat fell off, and there stood a tall man dressed entirely in gold. 
I am a king's son, he said, bewitched by that wicked dwarf who stole all my treasures to wander in a forest in the form of a bear until his death released me. In time, Snow White was married to the prince and Rose Red to his brother. Together they shared the large treasure which the dwarf had collected. The mother also lived happily for many years with her two children. The rose bushes by the cottage were replanted in front of the palace. Every year they brought forth beautiful red and white roses in honor of Snow White and Rose Red. Yeah.